You know, many years ago, I did a video on holoforms and burial urns, and I recently uploaded it onto YouTube, and I realized it's really long. Now, there's some really good technical information in that video, but what I realized is I probably should make a, an abbreviated version of the burial urn. So here it is. Let's talk about it. What you're going to need to know is volume. So for whatever going in the urn, let's say a 50 pound dog, you're going to need 50 cubic inches. So um, 180 cubic inches is typical for all human urns. So that's roughly three quarters of a gallon. So let's shoot for that. That would be a block of wood that's 10 by 10 by seven inches tall. Granted, you shape it in a nice spherical shape. This particular block of wood is quilted redwood and it's incredibly stable. You can finish it today, put a thread on the neck and the lid will fit forever. So it's an incredible wood. And not only that, it's local and it gets prettier as it sits out. It just gets a, more of a burgundy luster to it as it ages. Anyway, let's take a look at it. Anyway, that's the bottom of the block there. And I don't know what is going to be the top or the bottom of the urn yet. I'm going to put it between centers and we'll figure that out. I always want the best figure to be on top of the urn because that's where all the eyes are going to, to go to first. Start the process here. Good sharp tool, of course. Round it down. Little shear scraping here. You can see me put my hand on the form to make sure there's no bumps. Now I'm going to open it up and get a depth hole in there. And I use the the actual three eighths inch uh, spindle gouge here to actually do that depth hole. If you're not accustomed to that, by all means, just get a drill bit. Let's talk about the hollowing tools. Now, my particular hollowing tools is made by Carter and Sons, and it's got this arm brace here. When you go to hollow things, typically, whatever distance you are here, you need nine to 10 times length on the handle to that distance. This arm brace takes all that away. So uh, it's really straightforward hollowing tool. Um, this tool has also been made by John Jordan and Trent Bosch. Uh, we recognize that this is one of the easiest hollowing tools to use. So whatever you use and it works for you, that's great. Um, this is what the whole process is about. And before we go to hollowing, let's go ahead and get up a whiteboard here. And um, I'm going to just draw a hollow form here. Let's. It's always best if you only do half of it. So basically, I've, I've made my depth hole. So that's important to get that right. Then I'm going to scrape, scrape, scrape all the way down into the bottom, just like that. And basically, the nose of the tool goes into the depth, scrape left, scrape right, drops in, scrape left, scrape right, drops in, scrape left, scrape right, go, drops in. And as soon as the tool hits, and doesn't and no longer plunges. I'm at the bottom here. Now, then I'll, uh, I'll I'll take that same tool and get some more out here too as well. Then we will go to the hook tool and finish up. Always working top to bottom. You might leave some ridges in there. Know where those are. Feel around, um, and then just do a good job of it. When you get good at this, it won't take you long at all. This probably little form probably took me probably a half hour to hollow out. Let's take a look at this tool. So um, this is, let's go ahead and um, stop share here for a second. Here's what that looks like. It's a little three sixteenths inch round nose scraper easy to sharpen, and this also swivels so you can get into do some pretty unique shapes. And notice one thing here, the uh, it's kind of important that 
the hook part of the tool is uh, in front of the tool rest. The, so the straight part of the tool is always on the tool rest. You don't uh, ever want to bring the tool rest up here. The tool will kind of uh, get, get caught that way. Now here's the teardrop scraper. I've sharpened it all the way around, and now I'm going to use this to put a nice smooth wall on the interior. This is the last bit of scraping we'll do. Now, let's uh, stop and look at that. This is a thread chaser, a 16 TPI thread chaser that Carter and Son makes for me. I'm going to put a female thread right here along there, and you can see kind of a, a little soft spot that I uh, put to get the thread started. That's called a lead-in. And if you're interested in doing some thread chasing, uh, go look at some other videos that I have on the subject on YouTube. That's the female side, and then the male side is on this other side here that we'll use to make the lid. So I've turned down the lathe speed to about 500 RPMs. I kind of do a little song and dance with the wood. Uh, I just want to make sure the tool's moving smoothly all the time uh, because I've, I'm pushing the tool through in a spiral. Um, and just basically making the thread. And the thread is finished when it looks just like the chaser itself. Go through the sanding process. I'm going to sand all the way to 400 grit here. I'm on the vacuum chuck now taking away the tenon. I'm gonna put a little detail under here, make it look nice and finished. This is a quarter inch spindle gouge. Sand that up. Now I'll take it off the vacuum and now I'm ready to make my lid and then I'll let myself take over uh, explaining where the lid material comes from. Hey, in order to make our lid, I'm going to use a piece of African blackwood. Um, I store my African blackwood in here. They generally come in these, these are called clarinet blocks. Um, this is a true Delbergia. It's a, it's a rosewood, and it turns more like, it actually works more like metal than wood. Um, very interesting wood, it takes a nice thread. And the beauty of this wood is it's almost pure black. And so it doesn't compete with the base material of the, of the burial urn that we've made. So it makes a great contrast. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to measure the interior there, um, see what size of male thread I have to make. And then I'm going to uh, make that slightly oversized. Start large, and then I'll cut the thread down, cut the thread down, and eventually it's going to fit. I check the fit to see if it'll actually thread on. It does. Now, this is a female chuck. I basically threaded a side grain piece of pine and then made it. Uh, a, a thread in there to actually hold my lid so I can do a really nice finial here. This is a negative rake scraper. And I'm going to sand it all the way up to 600 here. And then I'm going to melt paste wax uh, with some 4 aught steel wool here and just buff it and do that two or three times. And then the lid is done. Yeah, you can see it's just jet black, gorgeous stuff. So um, now we're going to get to the finish. And um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I go through the finishing process. 
there's the raw urn. Now, I, I did mention earlier about how redwood changes color over time. It gets this deep, dark, burgundy richness to it. Um, in this scenario here, there's another additive that I could have used, and that would have been boiled linseed oil, but I did not. I used polyurethane gloss, and then I put 10% odorless mineral spirits in there, and I stirred it up really good, and now I'm going to rub that onto the holoform. You'll notice how much depth the, the oil gives it. This stuff will dry in about an hour, but I will wait about 24 hours before I recoat it with an acrylic lacquer. Look at that, just gorgeous wood. Just a really thin coat. Well, obvious, it's obvious here that I'm spraying lacquer. Um, this is an acrylic lacquer, um, super fast drying, and I use a pot here, not a rattle can, because um, the finish is a lot more inexpensive if I buy a gallon of it as compared to a rattle can, and that can get really expensive. Anyway, this will dry just in a few minutes, really easy to apply. If you get a drip, it's real easy to repair. Um, this will give me the marketable look that I'm looking for for the urn. Now, that, that spraying is done. That's not the end of the story. Now I've got a paste wax, like a min wax, and then I've got a four-aught steel wool, a really high-quality steel wool, and I'm going to scrub the whole urn down with the paste wax. And then I'm going to buff it with a paper towel, and then we're finished. And then it'll go get shipped off and... Uh, be used. Thanks for watching, everybody.